I'm joined by Nella Domenici. She's running for Senate in New Mexico. Good morning, Nella. Welcome back. How goes the campaign? Good morning, Hugh. Thanks for having me. Great to be back. Well, the campaign, we're in the last two innings, and it's a very, very exciting place to be. You know, like all Republicans right now, the issues are really on our side. And those two issues are huge in New Mexico. Um, and so we can really attach responsibility for those problems to the radical progressives that unfortunately dominate our state. And it gives us a real foray into the voters' mind. So our, now, uh, our campaign what's it cost? What's it cost to run a week of ads in, in Albuquerque and Santa Fe? I don't know what other major markets you have, but I know those two must be expensive. So actually, we're one of the lowest cost races in the entire state. Um, our race will probably cost 11 million, 12, 10, we don't really know exactly. And oh, wow. many of the other big races are north of 100, north of 200. So, but it is, you know, New Mexico's a lower income state. It's a small state population wise. It's not a high net worth state. So we need to continue to raise money so we can continue to run good ads the next few, few weeks. Now, in terms of the vice president going to the border today, is that going to help uh, Martin, your opponent? Because it just seems to me she's going to throw a uh, searchlight on the failure of the Biden era to control that border. You know, it's so obvious, it's just way too little, too late. The border problem, which, which Kamala Harris and Martin Heinrich have really caused, has been going on for many, many years, and it's, it's really damaging New Mexico. The head of the New Mexico, the most senior FBI uh, professional in our state, is literally quoted as saying, it's the border problem that has caused crime to permeate New Mexico into every corner of the state. And let me define crime in New Mexico. We are the number one state for crime. We have the highest crime problem of any state. So that can be pinned significantly to the border. That open border has let cartels, gangs, and fentanyl infest, infest our state. Do, do voters make the connection between the crimes, Martin Heinrich, Kamala Harris, and the border? Is it something you have to explain? Or is it something that they know? Great question. Um, unfortunately, it's something that we really have to explain. And it's not hard to explain, but it takes time and money. And we have to get in front of the voter to make sure they understand that. Do, uh, does the average voter understand cartels have monetized illegal immigration? This is the big difference from 4, 8, 12. I've been doing this since 1990. The border has come and gone, but this is the most it's ever been an issue in Senate and House races, as well as the presidential race, because people are feeling overwhelmed and it's dangerous. So Albuquerque is one of the most unsafe cities in America. And unfortunately, it's actually ranked in the top 20 most unsafe cities in the world. Um, and so voters definitely are starting to really uh, be heavily concerned about the crime such that they're considering moving, their neighbors are moving, they know people are not choosing not to come to our state, they hear about people considering tourism to the state, but they decide not to go to New Mexico because of the crime. So they're seeing it in their everyday life, but they're also feeling it in major, major situations. So for example, there was a multi-month um, operation to identify stash, stash houses, you know, where that's where um, the cartels are keeping immigrants of all sorts and they're horrible situations. And 15 stash houses were just identified in Albuquerque in the month of August. And 90 people were rescued from those stash houses. So that really confirms this is not a casual criminal problem. This is a cartel problem. Yeah, because casual criminals don't buy houses with cash and then pack them full of people who are waiting to be distributed into human trafficking network. Nella, uh, the District of Columbia has spiraled down in the last four years as well in terms of violent crime. Is the crime in Albuquerque obvious to everyone or is it secret crime like trafficking or is it violent crime like the district has carjacking? So uh, it's twofold. So it's not secret. It's so bad it can't be secret. Um, for example, in August, 
17, there were 17 homicides. Um, if that had been, and we only have 2 million people. So if that had been in Florida, that would have been 170 homicides. They have 10 times as many people as we have. And that would have been a huge newsworthy item in the entire country. But people know this. And every single day, you open the Albuquerque Journal, and on the front page is a story about crime. So people are finally realizing that crime is part of everyday life in Albuquerque. And parents don't even want their kids to go to UNM. They're scared for them to go there. And people are afraid to go to restaurants and park their cars outside the restaurant. They don't know what will happen to the car when they're inside the restaurant. People who live in what used to be safe neighborhoods are afraid to have their children go to gas stations alone after 7 p.m. So crime is, is really pervasive. But there is a second part of crime which is not reported. I've spent lots of time with police and sheriff. In fact, I, I spent an entire day driving with a sergeant um, uh, in the most dangerous part of Albuquerque. And I started with his shift, which began at 5 in the evening and lasted till 11.30. Most people don't understand a couple things. All the horrible crime that goes on on the border that relates to like child prostitution, that doesn't get enough press. And it's very, very common. In addition to that, the fentanyl issue is is horrible in Albuquerque. There are thousands and thousands of addicts. And I'm sure you know, you know, fentanyl deaths in our country soared from uh, 3,000 to 75,000 over a 12-year period. 75,000 deaths per year is more than all of the deaths we had in Vietnam by a lot. So fentanyl is a huge issue. But like, for example, in Albuquerque, I spent three hours driving around what's called the war zone. The war zone is a four by four mile area, the poorest and most criminal infested area. And every single block was overflowing with people just stoned out of their mind on fentanyl. And the reason is, is because the border is so wide open. Fentanyl tablets cost 30 to 35 cents. So fentanyl is wow. basically free and accessible. And what the radical progressives have done by opening our border and letting that fentanyl flow through, they have created a group of addicts who, for whom drugs are cheaper than ever and more accessible than ever. And those addicts will become a huge difficult problem for our country to address in a humanitarian way. We have to help those addicts with their addiction. And this is a crisis which is not covered adequately at all. The only Nella, reason thank I know you for telling us that. I, I want people to know how they can contribute to your campaign. Is it just Nella for Senate.com? Yep, Nella for Senate.com. We'd really appreciate it. We have six more weeks and we have to keep raising money and keep running ads and keep explaining these problems to New Mexicans. Keep coming back on, Nell. This is early for the New Mexico audience, but I'm hoping we put up at YouTube, people will listen to you because none of this has to be this way. I mean, that's it's a choice the country made via the president and the vice president and a Democratic Senate with Martin Heinrich to open the border. It's a choice. We can close the border. Do voters know that? They're finally realizing it, yes, but it took this massive crisis to occur. Well, God so bless your need, efforts. Keep, we need ahead, money just, to keep ads to keep explaining this to the average New Mexican. So I appreciate okay. well all put, the support. Possible. Well put. Nella for Senate.com. Nella for Senate.com. Go and help her.